Thanks for choosing News on to you with me, Renee Fong. The names of members of the Royal Commission of Inquiry, RCI, to assist investigation into the uncovered human trafficking camps and graves in Wang Klian in Perlis, close to four years ago, will be announced in February. Inspector General and Police Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi Harun said they have already identified the individuals and will jump straight into action once it gets the consent of the young Dibutuan Agong. Ini apa ni ekoran daripada uh, permintaan banyak pihak yang tak berpuas hati hasil daripada sesatan yang dibuat sebelum ini. Jadi walaupun kita dah jelaskan uh, semua peringkat di semua tahap tapi uh, masih ada pihak tertentu yang mengatakan tindakan kita tersebut tidak mencukupi. Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi said this after attending the Jasa Pahlawan Negara Award Ceremony at the State Police Headquarters in Kangar today. The mass killings grabbed headlines in May 2015 when police discovered 139 graves, 106 bodies believed to be Rohingyas and 29 illegal immigrants detention camps deep in the jungles of Bukit Genting Perah and Bukit Wang Burma, a few hundred metres from the Malaysia-Thai border in Wang Klien. The Kuala Lumpur High Court today said five days from 25th November for the hearing of a suit filed by the Sultanah of Trenganu, Sultanah Nur Zahira, against the founder and editor of Sarawak Report, Claire Rukasel Brown, and two others over alleged defamatory statements in the book, The Sarawak Report, The Inside Story of the 1MDB Exposé. Counsel Vishu Kumar, who represented Sultanah Nur Zahira, told reporters the dates were set by Judge Dato Ahmad Zaid Ibrahim today during case management in Chambers. He said nine witnesses, including Sultana Nur Zahira and Rukasel Brown, would be called to testify at the hearing set for 25th to 29th November. The proceeding today was also attended by Counsel Amrik Singh Sidhu, who appeared on behalf of Newcastle Brown and the two other defendants. Sultana Nur Zahira filed the suit on 21st November last year after naming Rukasel Brown or Claire Louise Brown, Gurat Budaya Enterprise publisher Chong Ton Sin, as well as the printing company Vinlin Press and Berhat as the first to the third defendants in that order. In a statement of claim, Sultana Nur Zahira alleged that Rukasel Brown had used defamatory statements in the book published around August last year, printed by Vinlin Press implying that she, the plaintiff, was involved in corrupt practices and interfered in the administration of Tranganu, as well as used her role to influence the setting up of the Tranganu Investment Authority, TIA, and assisted Joe Lo or Lo Tech Joe to be the advisor of TIA. She is claiming 100 million ringgit in damages from each of the defendants. Seven contractors were detained by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission (MACC) in Kluang, Johor yesterday for allegedly submitting false claims on providing supplies two years ago. According to a source, the seven contractors aged in their 30s to 50s, including two women, were detained at the MACC office about 4 p.m. Investigation found that these contractors had submitted false details on supply jobs at the Johor State Unity Department for 2017, amounting to 48,600 ringgit, but there were no supplies. All the suspects who are the owners of different companies were detained to assist in the investigation. The investigation is carried out under Section 18 of the MACC Act 2009, which provides for a fine of five times the value of the bribe or 10,000 ringgit, whichever is higher, and a jail term of up to 20 years if convicted. Meanwhile, Johor MACC Director Dato Azmi Alias confirmed the arrest of the contractors. He said the Johor Bahru Magistrates Court had issued a remand order for seven days on three of the suspects and five days on two others beginning today. Another two suspects were released on MACC bail at 5,000 ringgit in one surety each. An unemployed man pleaded not guilty at the Ayakaro Magistrate Court today on the charge of sexually molesting a child in Bandar Hila Melaka last November. R. Ruben, 26, made the plea in front of Judge Norma Ismail after the charge was read out by a translator. 
According to the charge sheet, the accused had committed the offence on a 10-year-old girl at Bukit Senjuang Jalan Bandar Hilir at 9am on 7th November. He is charged under Section 14, Subsection A of the Sexual Offences Against Children Act 2017, which carries a mandatory 20 years jail and caning. Prosecution had asked for a bail of 20,000 ringgit and one surety, but after the accused appeared for a lower bail, Judge Norma said bail at 15,000 ringgit with one surety. 27th February has been set for case remention. Meanwhile, two Indonesian women were sentenced to three months jail after they pleaded guilty of committing prostitution at the Ayekro Magistrate Court. Magistrate Muhammad Firdaus Saleh meted out the sentence to Reni, 25, and Hardianti, 33, after both pleaded guilty to the charges read separately by the court's translator. According to the charge sheet, both of them had been guilty of providing sexual services in return for money and hotel in Jalan Munshi Abdullah Malaka at around 2.30 p.m. on 14th January. Magistrate Muhammad Firdaus also decided that upon completion of the sentence, the two Indonesian women will be handed over to the Immigration Department for further action. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, has arrested a Thai fisherman for possession of a quantity of katum leaves, katum juice and cough mixture on a fishing boat about 2.3 nautical miles northwest of Tanjung Kemarong. MMEA Keda and Perlis Director First Admiral Maritime Rosali Mohamed Said stated today that the 51-year-old fisherman who was the skipper of the Malaysian boat was held at 1.30 p.m. yesterday by MMEA personnel on patrol. The MMEA squad found his identification documents in order and inspected the boat and stumbled upon 710 grams of ketum leaves in a fish crate. Further examination led to the discovery of 10 plastic bottles, each containing 500 millimetres of ketum juice and four bottles, each containing 100 millilitres of cough mixture. Rosali said the fishermen, the boat and the sea's material were brought to the Bukit Malut Maritime Malaysia jetty for subsequent action. A fire destroyed the semi-concrete double-storey house in Kampung Batu Manikar in Labuan today, leaving a family of 13 homeless. No one was, however, reported injured. The Labuan Fire and Rescue Department Director Zainal Madasin said three fire engines and 12 personnel from the Layang and Jawa fire stations rushed to the house at Simpang 29 Kampung Batu Manikar after being alerted at 10.22 a.m. and they fought the blaze for more than an hour. It is believed that the owner of the house, Nga Tina Warijan 64, and a few of her family members managed to escape from the burning house while the rest were out at work. The Labuan Fire and Rescue Department Director further noted that the the cause of the fire and damages have yet to be ascertained and is currently being investigated. Meanwhile, village head Ismail Saman said the family members were now staying with a relative in the village. Only about 25% or 1.42 million out of 5.72 summonses issued by Bukit Aman's Traffic Investigations and Enforcement Department JSPT nationwide last year have been settled. JSPT Director Dato Aziz Man Alias in revealing this said the department issues around 15,000 summonses daily nationwide to road users for various offences. Ini juga bermakna JSPT sedaya upaya uh, meneruskan prestasinya untuk menguatkuasakan undang-undang di mana uh, kita mengeluarkan uh, saman Setiap hari, average-nya lebih kurang 15,000 saman. Setiap hari. Eh. Dan uh, dalam sebulan, kita uh, mengeluarkan saman hampir 500 ataupun setengah juta saman dikeluarkan kepada pengguna-pengguna jalan raya atas berbagai-bagai kesalahan. Lah. Speaking at a special media conference in Bukit Aman today, Dato Azizman said the summonses included the six-man offences, namely driving in the emergency lane, speeding, overtaking on double lines, running a red light and using the phone while driving. He, however, added that the number of road fatalities last year dropped by 6.3% to 5,870 cases compared to 6,265 cases the previous year. For the record, Selangor recorded the highest number of accidents followed by Johor and Kuala Lumpur.
coming right up in the business news, Mata expects 200 million ringgit for this year's fair. The Malaysian Association of Tour and Travel Agents, Mata, is expected to receive around 200 million ringgit and returned in conjunction with its fair this year. Its chief executive officer, Pua Tai Neng, said at the moment, more than 1,000 exhibition stalls with various exciting offers to be offered have been booked. We are very happy that Hobon Hobon are working with us as a very, uh, one of the top, especially in uh, the city of KL, the bus for, not only for international tourists, but also for domestic <coughs> tourists. Pua also said that Mata has also got the cooperation of the KL Hop On Hop Off transportation service that offers rides around the federal capital for the upcoming fair. This year, we'll also see the participation of foreign tourism agencies from Taiwan, Macau, South Korea and Japan, among others. The Mata CEO further noted that around 100,000 people are expected to attend the fair, which will be held on 17th March at the Putra World Trade Center in Kuala Lumpur. Malacca is committed to fulfil Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad's plans to make Malaysia a high integrated and corrupt free nation. Its Chief Minister Adli Zahari said receiving the anti-bribery management system ABMS certification is one of the initiatives of the Malacca Chief Minister's office in efforts to eradicate corruption in the state. Commenting further, Adli said the ABMS certification would increase the working qualities of the civil servants and at the same time practicing a corrupt, free culture. He also said that his office is the first agency to receive the ABMS certification. Bagi pihak kerajaan negeri, kita akan cuba mempertingkatkan lagi pengetahuan di kalangan para pentadbir untuk menggunakan sistem ini. Dan kita mengharapkan di samping kita memberikan kesedaran secara umum, di samping kita membuat penambahbaikan kepada pentadbiran kita. Jadi sistem dalam inti rasuah ini juga penting. The Malacca Chief Minister said this after receiving the ABMS certification at Seri Negeri in Aikro. And that concludes this evening's news on two. In our top story, members of Wang Kalian RCI to be announced next month catch the live telecast of the ASEAN F Basketball League match between BT and CLS Knights Indonesia and West Ports Malaysia Dragons right here on TV2 with game time at 8pm. I'm Renee Fong. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant evening.